Blue Eyes crashes out the Tier Zero Rizal meta. Blood Moon is still in stock for those of you that want to pick up the new Fiendsmith deck box. The front of the box over here on the left, I think, is one of my favorite parts of this for the foil pattern, especially with the, how the moon is going to look on the top of the box. And, of course, the art itself is fantastic. So I'll leave a link down below so you can grab yours today. Make sure you guys smash the crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more Oz content. I love taking a look at the next play weekly because you always get to see some sort of interesting story over here with this. So our breakdown this week, we actually had a lot more people present than last week, which is actually pretty good to be seeing. So we had five Rise Old Duelists in the room. Yes, I love when five people in the room are playing virtually tier zero meta that we all have to sit here and deal with, which is understandable. But on the flip side of that equation, we also had five Malice players here stepping into the light going, hey, we are the second strongest deck. We are going to be the challenger to try to smash through the meta, which, okay. Then we also have down here three Blue Eyes White Dragon Duels. Now, I'm not really surprised to see Blue Eyes. It is kind of the budget-friendly art alternative to, you know, not having to pick up everything for the for the rise old deck or the malice deck and you're kind of just in a good position then we have goblin bikers goblin bikers have started to kind of be recognized as the anti-meta rise old deck and it, it's only been like a a strange you know kind of untested theory right now but you know if this deck can actually just control rise all you know by detaching the opponent's materials well then congratulations the deck can actually generate this field and start to pressure the opponent out of the game which is uh, what you're looking for and then we also had two hero duelists um i'm not surprised about that either hero having gotten their last round of upgrades has been very 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 nice um now you're one of section here i see we have memento i see that we do have a Flamburst Dragon. Somebody played a Gladiator Beast deck, which I don't uh, think uh, had much of a chance here, which is really sad. Um, we also had one Voiceless Voice. Um, I, actually, I think that's our Flamburst list. One unknown that I don't know. And then we have a Water Duelist. And I'm not sure what this other list is, but looking at your overall participation here, numbers look way better than they have, all right? You have challengers against the stronger side of the meta, and it's looking very, very good. Now, we flip on over to the top cut and as you can see wow three rise old duelist went home very very sad actually they didn't get the chance to advance through top cut all poor tier zero deck you didn't have uh you didn't have a chance but two did make it on in which is good hero still sitting here in the driver's seat back here now once again hero has been looking way better as an option than i think people kind of wanted to give this credit for you know we got the new evil hero stuff you know dp is still a fantastic card still does its thing and then we have the power of malice wow four malice tools <laughs> did not get past the uh, early half of this that's sad then we have one goblin biker duelist yes that's right one goblin biker that not only managed to overcome this barrage of things goblin bikers managed to get second place of all things which is actually kind of insane to be thinking about our mermail atlantean duelist still sitting up here i mean the only real deck you've got to worry about shifting you is the one of malice that you have sitting here i don't really think that's going to be that big of a deal we also have a voiceless voice competitor here as well still doing a relatively strong thing uh no real sh uh, strange thing there and then we have blue eyes white dragon now blue eyes ended up winning this event Blue Eyes actually taking up the helm as a very, very strong anti-meta contender out here. Smashing through the walls, which I think was by far probably the most interesting thing out of this. But your top cut here, looking very, very solid. All right, even though this format has been pretty much dubbed a loss and looks like a tier zero format, you know, when you can look at a more localized event like this and you can see the differences post-Supreme Darkness, that a little bit is making, I actually gotta say, I like that. Now let's pass it on over to Decklist. Winning our event was the unbridled power of Blue Eyes White Dragon. And I gotta tell you, this is actually kind of refreshing to see. Now the first thing you're gonna see, yeah, they are playing Baron to floor. I mean, it is by far the best level 10 that they have access to. Not really much you can do about that, right? Like, the deck gets one negate, ooh, it's the end of the world. I mean, you can play without it. I do see, we do have access to the Pyre's maps in here. 
Uh, no Dragon Master Magia. To the amount of people that scream to the top of their lungs going, I need Magia and I need it now. No. No, you don't. Uh, I do find it very funny that this is the first list that I've seen that's playing Bingo Machine Go. Um, I definitely don't think people have uh, really considered that option. We are playing the one Gamma with the one Driver. Uh, you also only have two Blue Eyes in the deck. To the purest out there, that's going to make them screech. Um, you're reducing the amount of bricks you're playing. All right. If they get double by steel, well, shit. You know, life just happens. There's not much that you can really do about that. And, of course, some ultimate slayers to kind of clean up things that your opponent is trying to do to you to put you in a bad position. But I think this deck looks very, very, very solid. Next up here, we have the Detach All of My Opponent's Stuff and Laugh at Them, the deck, which is really funny, by the way. It's taken Goblin Bikers this long to kind of be realized that, oh, hey, we're the anti Rise old deck. You know, we feed off of our opponent's materials. Why, why are we just not stripping down the Dreadnator out here and making sure that it literally is a worthless card? I don't know why it took this long for us to kind of go, hey, you know, we have an anti deck. You know, we were talking about using goblins as a method to stop purely, but look at Rizol and everybody was like, oh, that's an Xyz deck. Why are, we? yeah, it, it's, it's starting to become more and more of a discussion point. And I like this. Also, the punk stuff giving this deck a little bit stronger of a base and of course the fiendsmith stuff ensuring that you have a stronger boss monster to kind of put on the field and establish that's my only real complaint about this deck is it really feels like it doesn't have a lot of oof to make sure that you know it can kind of end games you have to rely on a lot of the generic board pieces but you know what a bow a q scythe lock your opponent go to town duelist i'm sure you can do so much now we get down here into third and fourth we have a first risal list here now Rizal, I mean, the only thing that this deck has to really do is just start establishing big monsters. And it's going to get the job done. One of the biggest cool things that I did see out of the weekend now here was we are starting to play the new Rank 4 to give us access to some of the cool abilities that it has, uh, which is actually pretty good. I mean, when when they printed the Rank 4, I didn't really know if Rizal was going to want to consider it. But you know what? We are now. I see this build's also playing Dugaras, a Timeless. And this build's actually gone to two Meteor Logic Aggregator. I know, I know there was a discussion for wanting to play two Meteor Logic originally, and I, I've always kind of been very pro wanting to play the two of it, because after you do the first EX, there's just sometimes where you want the second, or your opponent has the buy steal to bump the one Meteor Logic out of the graveyard, and it becomes such an inconvenience at that point that you have to kind of interact with that, that you don't really want to deal with that. So that's a pretty big thing out here. It's like, hey, if I can circumvent this, then we can actually kind of play the game a little bit easier, and I like that. All right, and then we also have another Rizal list for you out here. Uh, you do see a difference of the amount of droplets that these two lists are playing. The other list is playing two. This one's choosing to play three for board breakers, which I think is absolutely fine. Uh, this list is only playing one meteorologic aggregator. I do see... That this list is trying to get super cheeky and it's playing a Exo Sister down here. Now, I'll be honest with you, you have so much access to the generic rank 4 toolbox that maybe playing something like the Exo Sister card gives you an, a cheeky little advantage depending on what your localized environment is. And I, I think that this is a pretty good tell sign of what you can do here. I also do see we have the thrust. We can also toggle into the uh, the ultimate slayer off of that. This build is also citing two more copies of the field spell, which tells me post side decking that they were just going so extreme out here that you would just be devastating your opponent with all of these field spell controls, generating as much advantage as you possibly can, and just doing as much as you can. That's actually kind of insane to think about out here. But that is your top four. Now we have a straggler list back here, which is our mermail list. It's kind of curious to see what OCG mermail has been doing. And you know what? To probably much of your surprise, this essentially looks like a TCG list at this point. You know, you triple minstrel to hand rip away from your opponent. Uh, triple Neftabis for the best starter in the deck. Now, obviously, the OCG does have Maxi. We don't. So why would they not choose to play the best draw power that they have? Also, you know, Triple Food Wars and Double Perulia. I can't really imagine why that's, you know, not broken. But we did get new Mermail support in here. And I'm not really seeing this build. It, it's playing one sub-new monster in the deck. 
But in terms of extra deck, they're not really doing anything too crazy with this. Sure, you're playing, I think, two new cards from the support is really what you're adding into this, and that's just it. So that is your breakdown for next play. Like, actually watching Blue Eyes overcome Rizal is freaking hilarious to me. So make sure you guys smash the little crap out of that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see your beautiful faces back in there in day, guys. Patrons, thank you. Ah! <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.